This is DW News Live from Berlin. Britain's Brexit legislation clears a major hurdle. Now is the time to act together as one reinvigorated nation, one united kingdom. Lawmakers back Prime Minister Boris Johnson's withdrawal bill by 124 votes, meaning the UK is now on course to leave the European Union at the end of January. We'll get the latest from London. Also coming up, Australia's Prime Minister responds to public criticism and cuts short his holiday to face the bushfire crisis. Two volunteer firefighters battling a blaze near Sydney are killed as crews work to contain more than 100 fires. Police in India tackle renewed nationwide protests against its controversial new citizenship law. 11 people die in the unrest and thousands are detained. Plus, top tube riders in Hawaii find out which country dominated in qualifying for surfing's debut at the Olympics next year. I'm Helena Humphrey. Glad you could join me. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has won the backing of lawmakers for his bill to take Britain out of the European Union. Now, the vote followed the Conservative leader's substantial victory in last week's snap election. The bill has a few more stages to go through before it becomes law, but getting past this first hurdle means that the UK is finally on a definite course to leaving the European Union at the end of next month. I'm Helena Humphrey. Glad you could join us. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has won the backing of lawmakers for his bill to take Britain out of the European Union. Now, the vote followed the Conservative leader's substantial victory in last week's snap election. The bill has a few more stages to go through before it becomes law. But getting past this first hurdle means that the UK is finally on a definite course to leaving the European Union at the end of next month. Rules. Well, this evening, DW correspondent Barbara Wesel joins us from outside Parliament in London. Good to see you, Barbara. Does this result mean that Brexit is now, finally, a done deal? Uh, it's not a done deal, of course, we heard that, but it is really on the way. It will happen. Uh, formally, Britain will leave the European Union on the 31st of January of next year. There is simply nothing anymore that can impede that. No opposition, it lies in tatters. The protest movement here is equally completely uh, sort of down and out because people are shocked and they don't feel the, the strength anymore to stand up. There were not even any protesters anymore today uh, during this vote uh, in front of Parliament who had been uh, so vocal in the months before. For. So all this really seems to be over for the time being. But we know that in February, the negotiations with the European Union will have to begin about the future relationship. And then, of course, everything will start again. There will be a new fight about what kind of relationship that will be. Boris Johnson has made it quite clear, as we heard, uh, that he wants to really not align with the European Union. So what does that mean? There are further bitter, bitter battles up the road. Well, stay with us, Barbara, as we take a closer look at the withdrawal agreement behind this legislation, which, as you know, has been three and a half years in the making. The divorce deal settles the divisions of assets and liabilities. It also guarantees the rights of EU citizens living in Britain and UK citizens in EU countries and finally sets out the future for the vexed Irish border dilemma. That proved to be the main sticking point in negotiations, how to handle trade along the Northern Ireland border between the UK and EU member Ireland. The proposed backstop arrangement was removed in favour of a solution whereby Northern Ireland will maintain free movement of goods across the border. Avoiding a hard border with customs post was seen as essential for protecting peace in Northern Ireland under the Good Friday Agreement. But the future trading relationship between the UK and EU remains to be hammered out. After Britain leaves the bloc on January 31st, 2020, it will adhere to EU rules during a transition period until the end of the year. That means the risk of a no-deal hard Brexit remains if Britain and the EU cannot agree a new trade deal by the end of 2020. 
EU diplomats warn that's a process that normally takes several years. Well, Barbara Wiesel is still with us. Barbara, the debate over the UK and the EU has cost Conservative Prime Ministers their jobs. Is everyone on the same page now? Everyone in the Conservative Party is, and that is simply because all the other Tories, the ones who wanted to stay close to the European Union, maybe even stay in the European Union, uh, they are all gone. Uh, during the bitter fight about Brexit in the course of last year, they all left the party and then uh, they sort of stood down, the majority of them, uh, when the election came up. So this means you're looking at a completely different Conservative Party now. It has had a sharp shift to the right and everybody everybody at the moment is a Boris Johnson loyalist there is nobody who would even say a word against him or his plans so for him it's all plain sailing for the rest of Britain uh, the opposition has to rebuild itself and for people who were naturally opposed to Brexit because they feel it limits their possibilities and their life within Europe they just have to think how, whether they will continue fighting and how they want to leave this fight? Is it about the future relationship or uh, do they want to start opposing the government and Boris Johnson's plans? All this is yet completely open. And let's talk about Brussels as well because it's reacted to the vote with the new EU Council President Charles Michel describing it as an important step in clarifying uh, London's relationship with Brussels. How much is this a relief for Europe? There is, of course, the aspect of relief because the fighting is finally over, the going in circles and running back and forth and, and the insecurity that brings and the insecurity that it has also brought to the EU and the constant preoccupation with Britain. They want to think about other things. But on the other hand, everybody in Brussels knows that the bitter end is yet to come because the negotiations about the future relationship, Boris Johnson has only left 11 months for those. No, he can change that easily at any time. It looks like a ploy, some, some ploy that he's just using to blackmail the EU in try, what, giving him what he wants. But, uh, on the other hand, if it is just about a bare bone trade agreement that they're talking about, uh, they might be able to hit the time limit, but they might also not be able to agree on anything. So, that is still all up, and the European Union is not quite certain what next year will Will be holding. Well, February 2020 looks to be the date to mark in the diary as the tricky one. Barbara Reves will try and get some rest before then. Thanks a lot. Well, let's take a look now at some of the other stories making news around the world. Britain's Prince Philip has been admitted to a London hospital for what Buckingham Palace says is precautionary treatment of a pre-existing condition. A royal source told the media that Queen Elizabeth's 98-year-old husband was able to enter the hospital building on foot. The prince retired from public life in 2017. The Dutch Supreme Court says that the Netherlands must cut greenhouse gas emissions sooner than planned. The judges upheld a lower court ruling that demands emissions be at least 25% below 1990 levels by the end of next year. Activists welcome the ruling, which says protection from damaging climate change is a human right. A second intelligence officer has died after a shooting outside of Russia's FSB security headquarters last night. The suspect was shot dead by police at the scene. Investigators raided his home outside of Moscow earlier on Friday. Well, Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison has apologised for going on holiday while the country contends with a massive bushfire emergency. Mr Morrison paid tribute to two volunteer firefighters who were killed as they tackled a blaze near Sydney. Three others were seriously injured. Now, they were among thousands battling to contain about 100 ferocious blazes raging across the state of New South Wales. Well, James Morris is with the New South Wales Rural Fire Service. He told us what firefighters are doing to combat these mega blazes. Nimisha Jai as well there in Delhi. Well, the telecoms operator Orange has been found guilty by a French court over a string of employee suicides beginning in 2006. The former CEO was sentenced to prison and his top lieutenants were convicted in what is a landmark ruling. 
Well, the troubled US aircraft company Boeing faces another setback. Its Starliner astronaut capsule went off course and did not reach its planned orbit. But the US space agency, NASA, says that the unmanned spacecraft is in a stable position after its launch on a test flight to the International Space Station earlier on Friday. The Starliner is meant to free NASA from reliance on Russia to travel to the ISS. NASA has been forced to rely on Russian Soyuz rockets to transport its astronauts since the space shuttle program was terminated in 2011. Well, in a news conference, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine said that a technical error with the onboard clock caused the glitch. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. Jim Bridenstine there from NASA. Well, Skid Row in Los Angeles is well known for its homeless population and life there can be tough, but one resident is trying to change the face of his neighbourhood through his art. Under the artistic name Shows Art, he draws attention to Skid Row's plight. Well, surfing makes its debut at the Summer Olympics next year and the World Surf League is acting as a qualification route. Brazil proved they will be a force to be reckoned with in Tokyo, with male surfers finishing first and second in Hawaii. But the world title went to the lesser known of the two. This is DW News Live from Berlin. The day is up next. Join me for that.